ustedes también en inglés. Yeah. All right. It's just that the book is in English, so he's a better office. My name is Kevin, and he's Giovanni. We're gonna be presenting the book "Too Big to Know" by David Wayne. Wayne. Mm -hmm. about the, this book to be to know about what is knowledge, the impact that it has in society, his controversy, the transforming of information between decades or years, the network that it takes to create information, his information, and how we know about knowledge today. What is knowledge? Knowledge is the intellectual form of accepting an event, a fact, or just anything at all. It's like when you grow, you learn that a phone is a phone when you see it now. But when you were a baby, you didn't know that it was a phone. You learn it. It comes from information from the past. It goes hand in hand to hand to personal experiences you know, from your past. Impact of knowledge. The individual opinion goes hand in hand with experience and beliefs. But when it goes but when it does become knowledge, but, but, but when it does become knowledge? The information thing that is transformed to personal needs. Perceptions plays an important role to obtain information. Many of the information it comes from experience from our past, and this book talks a lot about what is real information. Does know something is really make us professional? There isn't just one person to, who holds and protects the information. It is a process. It is just facts, it has in both opinion, experience, and media. There isn't an expert on subjects anymore. Many of this information can change between years or decades and become obsolete or evolve. Transforming information. It can be translated into beliefs like religion, Belief is dependent on how of how ignorant we are to what we just learned. Beliefs we can rely on. Beliefs that we can build on. Beliefs worth pres preserving and cherish. 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 That was um, a quote from T. S. Eliot that Wayne Berger put in the book to state the fact that knowledge is being transferred into the margin of what we believe in. Because what we believe in is so different, what we perceive from the information that we obtain is going to change greatly on what is going to signify that information or knowledge in our lives. The lady said that we can build on refer to personal growth and there is there in, there in the knowledge. False knowledge or beliefs is just an easy to acquire because the, our mentality can be manipulated like a sample in North Korea. The, 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 the population of North Korea is totally manipulated by a dictator. Now, now I will let you be Kevin. In the book, Weinberger talks about how knowledge isn't knowledge and facts aren't facts and the smartest person in the room is not a person at all, it's just really the entire room at the same time. And from what we've read from the book, there is a lot of controversy when he's trying to expose his theories 
and trying to link them with the many historical examples that he, he puts throughout the book. Among these is the veracity of the information that we obtain through many different um, ways. Like for say, social networking such as Facebook, Twitter, etc. Or even um, newspapers or just talking with people. We do not really know 100% if the information that we are obtaining is true or not. Um, at the same time, the Wayne Burger exposes the, the fact that we have to be open to diversity. Because the diversity of people based on belief is going to give us um, a large spectrum of the information that we can absorb. And if we're open to that, we can not just learn one thing, we can learn many things at once from many, from many different people. Thing is that people put themselves into what, into what he calls echo chambers, which promotes ignorance. <coughs> the greatest controversy in the book is that not everyone can agree what knowledge is. And while many people, especially in this room, is going to tell me that I am wrong, and that Wayne Berger is wrong. What is true for you and what may be information for you is not necessarily information for me. Therefore, we cannot say that everyone in this room will agree 100% that what knowledge is exactly. However, I do say that knowledge is information, information regardless where we get it from. And it can mean absolutely anything. Its meaning will depend entirely on what the person perceives from it. The world contains so much knowledge and so many different sides of information that it's hard to decide whether the information is truthful or not, especially in, on the internet. There are groups or, or individuals that share the same ideas, and we can find this in many different places, especially in uh, academic uh, habitat, but the people who try to express their ideas and only include people who think the same way, um, those people, those people, are put into what Weinberger calls echo chambers. It's called echo because it resonate, resonates the same idea all over and over and over again. Uh, people who go into these echo chambers do not accept any type of diversity at all and therefore are not expanding their information or knowledge on a subject. Weinberger also states that there is there should be a right degree of diversity. If you have too little then you're not gonna get the depth or the richness of the decision or answer that you are looking for. You're just going to get a single-minded answer if you take answers from just one or two people. You should always get more than one opinion when you're trying to look for a solution to a problem. However, if you do have too much, then what occurs is the clash of ideas. The clash of ideas is too many people with too many opinions trying to decide on what is right and what is wrong on a subject, which and then can be very distracting to what the problem initially was and it can be a little chaotic as to determining what the solution will be for one, for the needs of one specific person. The most interesting part of the book was the key information or key quotes that Wayne Berger exposes in the book and he explains it in a way that it didn't make a lot of sense, uh, but we have to think about it for, uh, think about it for a second here. The first is that there is no privileged position. And what it means that there is there are no experts on any subject right now. Because it used to be back in the past that whenever we're going to learn about a subject, we go to an expert, we go to a doctor. Right now, there is so information that anybody can be the expert. But there's still the problem deciding whether the information that we got is truthful or not. Does it help us or not? Does it answer the question or, sim or simply it doesn't and we're wasting our time? At the same time that there is no experts on any given field in the world, 
it kind of contradicts itself in the book because we cannot learn everything about every single thing. Therefore, it is impossible um, to become an expert knowledge-wise on any given field. But because there is so much information, we have to strip it down to what is in line with our personal goals and what and with our personal interests. Like for say, I cannot learn about every single thing about the school, so I'm going to narrow it down to the thing that calls me out the most, which is my interest. For say, computer science. I can learn a lot about computer science, but I cannot learn a lot about chemistry because I'm just simply not interested in it. And we have to remember that the opinions and the belief system that every person has will give the knowledge and the information depth. It will give it a much bigger meaning than we can possibly know. What we obtain from many different sources is just raw information. What we make out of it, due to our personal experiences and opinions, will give it a, a meaning and will give it it will give it purpose when you're determining whether if it's a solution to a problem or not. There is another key information, uh, which is the network can make us smarter if we want to be smarter. There is a huge, there's like a, an entire chapter dedicated to whether the network and mind that the network is not simply the internet. The network can be lots of different things. Like right now, the university is a network of people. We're not necessarily connected to the internet. But the, the misuse of the network has become a distraction. We're not using the tools provided to us on a social setting um, for our personal gain. We're not using it uh, to learn about the different things. We're just using it for our work, for our own amusement, regardless of what that may be. And the sad part about this is that we're not interested about learning many different things at once. We're just interested in learning what interests us, what makes us happy, and therefore we're losing um, a ton of resources in the process. The network itself is an echo chamber. Like for say, um, many students here will not go to the same places that I would go because our interests are not aligned. Our personal goals are not aligned. So whenever we go to a place where we can expose our ideas, we're just entering an echo chamber that validates whatever ideas we expose to the people. And here's the explanation of the echo chamber. And it's a social place where a person can extend their knowledge to other people who think the same way and avoids differences. If you're um, a Muslim, for example, you're not gonna go to a Catholic church because simply it goes against your beliefs. And therefore, if you go to the same, if you're a Catholic and you go to a place where only Catholics exist and not um, any other type of religion, then you're putting yourself in an echo, in, a, in an echo chamber. Your ideas are only going to get validate, validated by people who think the same way, and are not going to be contradicted by people who think in a different way. There are other two key informations that I wanted to include, and I included actually the paragraph that was written on the. Um, the written portion of this assignment, and uh, I'm going to explain, explain it briefly. All knowledge and experience is an interpretation, and we all know this to be true. Whatever we take from the world, at any given point, there's going to be an interpretation of that information or that data, and we're gonna use it for whatever we need it for. Also, the interpretations are social. No interpretation is going to happen um, on an individual level. There's going to be a group that you're going to be asking to, um, I perceive such information as X, and I wanna see if this information is right or wrong. And then you ask the network, which is the people, social media, etc., 
if the information that you obtain is it true is it false is your interpretation right does it does it mean another thing it happens on a social level and not on uh, and not in an individual level and what this causes is that the data and the information becomes collective not from just one part but from the entire world because everybody in some way contributes to the information that you just obtained now the interpretation of things do not happen instantly it happens over time and it can sometimes get out of context when trying to make se make sense of things especially in, in an academic setting this is not possible when you're trying to interpret something some type of data some type of information you cannot take it out of context because it then transforms into something else and the initial thought the initial line of thought of the interpretation of said knowledge is just going to get lost and it's going to be transformed into other things that are going to be taken at the same time out of context I believe that interpretation should be made um, based on fact and not on emotions as emotions um, can make a person biased towards the information like for say um, on a political or religious subject is a, if a person is making an interpretation of the information based on belief um, I mean based on emotion it can make a person biased as to no, this part of this of the text is right because that's what I believe in when not everyone else may share the same opinion so it should be be made on fact problem is that we don't know whether the information is truthful or not once again is it fact or is it a farce also in the in terms of interpretation Weinberger states that all information is free and, and open to personal interpretation. Problem. All the information that we obtain right now comes from the internet. We don't know if it's true or not once again and whatever interpretations that we make of it we're just satisfied with the first thing that we find and that is such a wrong thing to do um, for the current past and future generations we should be able to verify whatever information we obtain so the interpretation should happen in a series of discourses or a series of dialogues or conversations that can actually expose the theme or subject for a higher level of interpretation to figure out whether the information is useful or not at the same time that the series of dialogues or conversations may happen, the initial interpretation of the information may not be entirely present because what I thought would be an interpretation of, let's say, a camera after the discussion, that interpretation may be lost because it wasn't what I just thought. It was, um, there was a, a, an acceptance by a wider social mass that says that what I thought it was a camera is not a camera it's something else the network and knowledge as we know it today is not as we know it before it's not a library full of books right now it's just the internet and the diversity of opinions further the type of knowledge that we acquire from a single source the reason why Weinberger was exposing this idea was because somehow a lot of people get their information from places like forums and social media those are not verifiable sources those are opinions set forth by people who have something to say about a subject um whatever we whatever we take from a source of information our opinion of it make it our own but at the same time it does not make it useful, truthful, or or it does not answer a question. It's just our voice saying what we needed to say about a subject. At the same time, while not every opinion based on a subject is wrong, 
those who are right can help shape uh, the experience on the way a subject is being discussed for other people. And an example of this is the forum. You set a thread of a subject on a forum and the subject the subject keeps being discussed and it progresses over time and at the end of the, uh, of the thread while it's going to be discussed um, till the end of time as I, um, as I like to put out the experience of what we thought initially of a subject or an object or a person will change drastically the more people who contribute to the set to the to the subject or information right now the internet is being is being used more than anything else for information and this is actually sad because the information the the internet does not contain a lot of verifiable um, information whereas libraries contain books that in order to be published they have to be verified I'll be, yes there is a bunch of books that contain a lot of mistakes and Wayne Berger's books is one of them but there is an increased percentage of feeling safe that the information that you acquire is a lot more useful than the information that you're going to be obtaining from the internet In conclusion, our thoughts about the book, it contains a complete synthesis, uh, complete synthesis on what is knowledge before, today, tomorrow. Um, the book contains too much history facts. I get that Wayne Berger was trying to um, use history facts to provide an example for his theories, but they eventually backfired like halfway through the book. Um, most of the chapters in the book are just um, a paraphrase of what he had mentioned in the earlier chapters of the book. The information is determined, is determined by many based on experience. It's not just determined by one person. One person can, can say something and that person can be wrong. Therefore, it should be discussed by a large group of people or social masses in order to verify if it's true, true or not. Not all information is knowledge, and not all knowledge is truthful. Um, what this means is, like I, uh, like I stated before, not all, what you think is information for you is not information for me, and not all information is knowledge. Because it may be something that may be obvious to you, and for me is something that is not so obvious because it's something that I did not know and when that happens when when it's set apart like what is knowledge to you and what is knowledge to me and information our perceptions of it our experiences beliefs and opinions are going to transform that knowledge and, and, and information for our own gain and not the next person because of this, there are no experts on any field, as I stated before. As an example of this, um, I, in the written portion, I provided a, um, an example where it says that a pregnant woman is going to have her very first child and she has never taken care of a child. She asks for her friends to give her advice as, as to what to do. The information at first seemed truthful, but when she had her child, if she realized that all the information that she gained, all the, the advice that she obtained, did not work for her at all. Her own experience provided a solution to the problem that she was uh, that she was seeing at first. Therefore, she cannot say that her friends who had seven children were actually an expert on the subject of having a kid for the first time. The facts are now opinions based on experience, except those in a medical or scientific field. If we, um, if we go to a, a psychological setting, the facts are not going to be based on 
your experience with the patient or the person that you are treating or what you are trying to achieve except on a scientific setting whereas it can be verified through a series of experiments or process it's just like hard math and that's our presentation in the question Okay, el libro, al final, ¿Mm? ¿Qué sobre el libro? El libro, mm, dijiste algo. Sí, dije, dije, dije algo de, de, del libro, pero al final del libro, I was not impressed. I was not impressed, really. I mean, entre el prólogo, el, el prólogo y el primer capítulo, el segundo capítulo y el octavo capítulo, ese era el libro entero. Lo demás era literalmente fluff. Fluff. Yeah, yeah, too yeah. many historical facts just to provide an example you're not giving me theory you're not giving me, giving me anything new and this book has been praised by oh so many reviewers and it's not bringing anything new to the table yeah it's aburrido but the question of presenting a topic a topic that is very complex el tema del valor de la información, del conocimiento, etcétera, es muy complejo y posiblemente de los libros que teníamos es el tema más abstracto y más complejo, uh -huh. tema per se, si sí, eso influye. Sí. Y obviamente él tiene que dar un, tiene que sustentar su teoría, que quizá no sea completamente novedosa, como tú dices, pero la tiene que sustentar y los hechos históricos, etcétera sirven ese propósito, ¿no? Como lo sirven los experimentos en un texto científico. Se supone que sirviera con ese propósito. La cosa Quizás es se que la abundancia ¿no? de los hechos históricos hace que la idea o la teoría que se, se está pierda. tratando de exponer se pierda por completo. Se desvía el, el, el tema principal en el libro, se, de, se desvía tanto y de una manera que no me está hablando del conocimiento y la información. Me está hablando de cómo otras personas perciben ese conocimiento e información, no está exponiendo su teoría. Y yo personalmente no fuese a recomendar, bueno, recomendaría este libro por el primer, segundo y octavo capítulo, fuera de ahí el libro no claro. vale la pena. Hay que ver a... Yo me lo apunto aquí para el rey. All right. Pregunta que ustedes tengan.